In the year 1517, an Augustinian monk named Martin Luther pierced the bowels of the Roman Catholic Church with his 95 theses. As he nailed the document to the castle door in Wittenberg, the protest began. It was a costly protest, one that Luther never would have imagined. 500 years later, that protest continues. The Reformation began 500 years ago, but today, the flame of the Reformation continues to burn. Men gave their lives for the sake of the gospel. Beneath the pressures of the Roman Catholic Church, Martin Luther penned the words to his famous hymn, Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Luther believed what he wrote and was willing to stand firm, no matter the cost. The Pope referred to Luther as a wild boar because of his unwillingness to submit to the Roman Catholic Church's teachings. This historic protest against the sale of indulgences, the cheapening of God's grace, and the stranglehold on the Bible continued to spread like an unquenchable fire. It seemed as if the darkness of the Roman Catholic Church encompassed the whole world. And then, suddenly, the reformers emerged from the darkness and stood courageously with the torchlight of God's Word. A Latin statement emerged from this Reformation era, post tenebras lux, after darkness, light. In their attempt to gain control, the Roman Catholic Church kindled the martyrs' fires with the flesh of Protestants. Men, women, and children were burnt at the stake for merely teaching their children the Lord's Prayer in English. As the faithful were burnt at the stake for their faith, their bloodshed was not in vain. As Tertullian once said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. In 1536, William Tyndale was burnt at the stake for his translation and printing of the New Testament in English. Following in his footsteps was John Rogers. In 1555, under the rule of Queen Mary I, known as Bloody Mary, Rogers was burned at the stake after completing the Old Testament work of Tyndale in the Bible, known as the Matthews Bible. He was the first of nearly 300 Puritans who would be burned alive for their unwillingness to submit to the rule of the Roman Catholic Church under the rule of Bloody Mary. Although blood continued to be spilt in the streets and threats continued to thunder from Rome, men continued to preach and print the Word of God. Out of the Reformation era came five definitive doctrinal positions these Latin slogans are Sola Fide, by faith alone. Sola Scriptura, by scripture alone. Solus Christus, through Christ alone. Sola Gratia, by grace alone. Soli Deo Gloria, glory to God alone. According to John Calvin, justification is the main hinge on which salvation turns the reformers were protesting the abuse of the Roman Catholic Church and the outright perversion of the true gospel. 500 years after Martin Luther's protest, we continue to protest today. We protest any teaching that perverts the grace of God. We protest any doctrine that denies the exclusivity of Christ. We protest any group who would add to the sufficient word of God. We protest any movement that seeks the glory of man rather than the glory of God in the salvation of rebel sinners. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, for the glory of God alone. We preach Christ. We are Protestant. As a new generation reaches out for the torch of the historic Reformation, we must be prepared to run faithfully with this historic flame. In an ever-changing world of compromise and cultural relativism, we must have unwavering resolve and resolute perseverance. 
we must be willing to suffer shame and ridicule for Christ's sake. As we protest evil and stand for Christ, we will be hated and despised as fools for the sake of Christ. Nevertheless, we must stand. We are Protestant. We must preach Christ 